So take a look at this. Review, repeat, so important. Don't mistake, make this mistake. 1 John 3, 9. <clears throat> no one who is born of God and practices, practices sin. Actually, this is not good. No one who is born of God does not sin. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. New King James Version has it right. NASB has it wrong. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. And then the next verse is, well, look at this, though. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. So if you're born of God, you don't sin. So if you sin, you're not born of God. See, if you run 9 into 10, whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. So if you don't practice righteousness at all, or continually, and he does not love his brother, don't love your brother, you're not a believer. You know what? That's sinless perfection from the moment of faith alone in Christ alone. When I was 17 years old, there's no way I would have accepted that. That's why I didn't go down and make a decision for Christ. Because I knew I couldn't keep that up. Because it's just not true. God doesn't put you in a position with a sin nature and leaves you to your own auspices and then gives you the grace of confession of sins so that you can get back in his good graces and then says what? But you're not born again. You know, you're going to hell. There's no believer that can do that with the way God has set things up. So, moving back. 1 John 3.10a does not refer back to 1 John 3.9 to conclude that those who do not sin are children of God, born of God. Otherwise, with a single sin, a continuous, a practice, and habitual sin, then an individual has not been born of God, you're going to hell. Wow. 35 years as a Christian, and you don't recognize much anyway. You didn't bother studying. All of a sudden, you recognize, I've done something bad in my life. I never was saved in the first place. How many denominations say that? You have to persevere in order to be proving out your salvation. Because you, you lived the perfect Christian life, you think, for 30 years, but then you made one mistake, that shows that you were never a believer in the first place. How would you know? Believing doesn't have any characteristics to it of sinless perfection. Other people say it does, but it doesn't. So, 1 John 3, 10a, In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest, is contended by some to refer back to the context of 1 John 3, 9 in order to conclude the section leading up through John 3, 9 and then 1 John 3, 9 and 1 through 3, 10 with a statement that those who do not sin are children of God, born of God, otherwise with a single sin, continuous practice, habitual, individual has not been born of God and is a child of the devil destined for the lake of fire. That's awful. Especially when you get older as a believer, you say, wow, I have led a perfect Christian life. But I've done I've done what I think I, I can do. I probably could have do, done better. But now you're telling me I'm not even a believer at all. All is lost. I wouldn't want to tell somebody that. And the Bible doesn't say so. If this is correct and it's not, then 1 John 3, 10 I stipulates, whoever is born of God and whoever is not is determined by someone else's observation of one's own or someone else's behavior. That which is absolutely sinless behavior proves out one is a born of God. Some contend a continuation or a practice of sin or habitual sin is immune. But all it takes is an occasional, even a single sin, to become a continuation, a practice, or an habitual one. So you're condemning everybody to hell. Wow. Look to yourself. Otherwise, with a single sin, an individual is not born of God, but a child of God, destined for the lake of fire all these years. Since all mankind, aside from Jesus Christ and his humanity, remains capable of sin with finite, <coughs> flawed natures and mentalities, and no one is able to accurately discern who is sinless and who is not. You can't tell me I'm a sinner or not by your discernment. You're not even uh, perfect yourself. Hence, 1 John 3, 9 to 10a cannot be a test to see if someone is saved, as there is nobody qualified in the human race to accurately perform or pass that test except Jesus Christ himself, who is wholly born of God. Furthermore, if it is true that one becomes absolutely sinless, sinless as a result of becoming born of God, and it is not, then one has no one as yet has become born of God except Jesus Christ himself, and he doesn't need, he's God. So 1 John 3, 10a is best rendered, get this, 1 John 3, 10a is best rendered as looking forward. New subject, 1 John 3, 10a is best looking forward to a new section, with 10b finishing the thought 
begun in 10a. 10a it says, and this is made manifest the children of God and the children of the devil. And that is, the one who is not doing righteousness is not of God. Or you're not representing God. You're not of God what you're doing. And he who is not loving his brother. <clears throat> so obviously, that doesn't mean you're not a believer. It means you're just not of God. Therefore, 1 John 3, 10a begins another section in 1 John. Note that the implication of 1 John 3, 10 is therefore that a child of God, born of God, is to abide in the righteousness of the Son of God, in God's Word, a key message in 1 John. <clears throat> Tools to stay in fellowship with God. Confess. Admit that you are imperfect. And study the Word of God. <clears throat> abide in His Word. We've been saying this all along. 1 John 2, 28-3, 1. Now little children, abide in him, so that when he appears, we may have bold assurance and not shrink away from him in shame at his appearance. Did, did John say, now little children, abide in him, so that when he appears, we may shrink away because we're not born again? <clears throat> if you don't, no, it doesn't say that. You shrink away in shame. You don't, you don't say, well, you're not, you're not going to heaven anyway. It doesn't say that, does it? 1 John 2.29, if we know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who also who does acts of righteousness is born of him. So you know when you're doing something righteous, pretty close, the grace of God is working in your life, people see that, you're, he's born again, right? But that doesn't mean the one who isn't, isn't a, a Christian. Maybe he needs some comfort, direction from the word of God. Help him on his way, don't condemn him because he's not condemned, he's a born again child of God. Behold, how great a love the Father has bestowed on us that we would be called children of God, and such we are by hell, by born, being born again, faith alone in Christ alone. And such we are, for this reason the world does not know us, because it did not know him. So don't be the Christian's worst, worst enemy, a fellow believer. <clears throat> so conclusion, 1 John 3, 9, each one of those in view in 1 John 3, 8, the devil and the Son of God, who has been born of God, the Son of God who has been born of God into holy, perfect humanity, does not sin, which could only be the Son of God, Jesus Christ, excluding the devil. For God's seed, the Holy Spirit remains in him, in Christ, and he cannot sin because he has been born, wholly born of God. So, 1 John 3, 9 must be understood as follows. Each one of those in view in the immediately preceding context of verse 8, the devil and the Son of God. See, go back to 8. 1 John 3, 8. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. The Son of God versus the works of the devil, the devil himself. Which will you choose to emulate in this Christian life? Walk in the light of Christ's righteousness. Shun the devil. Move away from that. Then you get credited with perfection. Walk in the light of God's righteousness, purification from all sin, right? Because the blood of Jesus purifies us from all sin. So, immediately preceding context, the devil and the Son of God are in view, who has been, the, the Son of God has been born of God into holy, perfect humanity without a sin nature, which can only be the Son of God excluding the devil and excluding us. We're not wholly born of God. That's not sin. The Son of God does not sin for his God's seed. The Holy Spirit remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Matthew 1, 20-23 But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken of by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. So only a perfect, sinless man, only born of God through the Holy Spirit, who is God with us, can be in view in 1 John 3, 9. Hence, 1 John 3, 9 is not a test of salvation at all, nor 10a, but a statement of fact that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is born of God into perfect humanity, is the one for children of God, born of God, to follow and abide in his righteousness, and not the evil of the, of the devil, who has sinned from the beginning. Hence, abiding in the one who has been born of God is the message of 1 John 2, 28-3, 9. Are we done with that? Hopefully. 